Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. We're going to be graphing radical equations using shifts, focusing on horizontal translations, meaning sh moving shifting your parent graph either in the right or left direction. So before we do any shifts, let's talk about that parent. The parent function y equals square root of x has a few key points, and I find these key points by choosing x values that are easy to take the square root of, like 0, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2. Now notice I'm not using the point 2 for x, for example, because square root of 2 is some kind of decimal. I'm not totally sure what that is without a calculator. It exists, it's just not an easy point for me to graph. So I'm going to be basing my parent on those three key values. I'm going to put them on my graph now. Also notice on my graph here I've skipped by twos. Um, I made this graph kind of blown up so you can see it a little better. Here's my parent graph. I'm going to draw it dashed. And this is the graph of y equals square root of x. Notice when I drew it, some important things. This point zero, 0, is a dead end. It's a closed circle down there at the origin because I can't substitute in there any x values that are less than 0. I can't take the square root of anything that's less than 0. So we call that a domain restriction. My domain of this function is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. I can't plug in any negative numbers. On the other end of my function, I have an arrow. Going out to the right, I have an arrow because I can plug in x values as high as I want to. There's no restriction on that. While we're talking about domain, let's address the range as well. The range is the possible y values. And so if you look at my graph, my dashed line there, my x or my, my line, my curve never goes below the x-axis. It never goes below that horizontal line. So my range, my output, would be numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. Well, let's try a couple translations. Look at problems 1 and 2 off to the right here. y equals square root of x minus 2. Now, when the minus 2 is under the radical, that represents a horizontal shift. And usually, minus 2 is going to tell us 2 to the left. But that's not the case with shifts. Minus 2 inside the function tells us move or shift right 2. So every single one of these points in my parent is going to go boom, boom, 2 to the right. Boom, boom, 2 to the right. Boom, boom. Oops, didn't quite make it there enough. There we go, to the right. So here it is. This is my shifted graph now. This is square root of x minus 2. Let's try another one where we're going to shift to the left. This x plus 1 tells me shift 1 to the left. And again, that's counterintuitive. I'm, you, when I see plus 1 on x, I'm thinking to the right. Usually positive numbers are to the right. That's not the way the shifts work. If it's inside a function, you move the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. My endpoint is going to be shifted one to the left. And I could draw those same little, um, little arrows that I did, like move one to the left here, move one to the left here. And that'll tell me um, my three key points that are now translated to give me my third function, y equals radical x plus one. So this idea of shifting is a hugely key skill in math. It's something you're going to see a lot if you haven't seen it yet. What you do is you learn about or study or know how to f you figure out how to determine a parent function and then you apply these shifts, whether they be horizontal, up and down, combination of them, um, and then you always need to make sure you're addressing key points and domain and range restrictions. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had no, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off the airplane? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. Two. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.